What we want to do next is we want to discuss the key issues and key tables in this paper entitled On the Performance of Volatility Managed Portfolios, written by Cedarburg, Odorothy, Wang, and Jan. So, what's going on here in this paper? So, they use a comprehensive set of 103 equity strategies and analyze the value of volatility managed portfolios for real-time investors. So volatility managed portfolios do not systematically outperform the corresponding unmanaged portfolios in direct comparisons, yeah, which is in contrast to earlier research. So volatility managed portfolios tend to exhibit significantly positive alphas in spending regressions. However, the trading strategies implied by these regressions are not implementable in real-time scenarios. And reasonable out of sample versions generally earn lower certainty equivalent returns and sharp ratios than the simple investments in the original unmanaged counterparts. And they argue that this poor out of sample performance of these volatility managed strategies comes from structural instability in the underlying spending regressions. Yeah. So in the introduction, yeah, part of this paper, they basically give already a good overview what they actually do. Yeah. So the paper is about volatility managed versions of some popular trading strategies. Yeah. So these portfolios are characterized by conservative positions in the underlying factors when the volatility was recently high and more aggressively levered positions following periods of low volatility. So they use past factor volatility yeah, and scale it. So when the volatility of the factor of the, of the previous months, the past previous month was low, they leverage the position kept in this factor. And when the factor volatility of the past previous months was high, they would deleverage the position kept in that portfolio in the next month. So a lot of this paper is basically based on early, or it's, it's basically it extends the earlier paper from Morera and Moore, the 2017 paper published in the Journal of Finance. So the authors here uh, find that the empirical success of volatility management is purposive, is a purposive phenomenon, yeah? and it works out across uh, many different strategies. So the authors show that volatility scale strategies earn systematically positive alphas across a wide range of asset pricing factors, yeah? and these alphas imply pronounced increases, uh, sharp uh, sharp ratios, and large utility gains for mean variance investors. So it's interesting to note that this uh, earlier paper from Morera and Moore uh, gained considerable attention, not only in academia, so there were many follow-up papers, and I told you already that also me and my colleagues wrote uh, a paper, a follow-up paper based upon that research. Yeah, but also um, it's relevant, obviously, for the industry. Yeah, just keep just bear in mind factor investing, smart beater investing, which has become uh, very popular lately. So, in in this paper here, they the authors assess if volatility management is systematically beneficial for investors, yeah? and they place specific emphasis on real time implementation. So first, they uh, based uh, based on a substantially broader sample of 103 equity trading strategies. They find no uh, statistical or economic evidence that volatility managed portfolios systematically earn higher sharp ratios than the unmanaged portfolios do. Yeah. Moreover, they uh, confirm. Uh, the earlier paper from Morera and Moore in finding uh, that um, systematically positive spending regression alphas uh, for the volatility managed uh, portfolios. And this holds also in the extended sample used in this current paper. Uh, however, 
these volatility man managed uh, strategies are not implementable in real time. That's the problem because they require investors to combine the volatility scaled and unscaled versions of a given portfolio using ex post optimal weights. Yeah? So the optimal weights are not known ex ante and that's the big problem. So the method that, that they use is the same like in the paper from Moreira and Moore. Yeah? So basically they construct the um, risk managed factor at time t simply by scaling the, un, the unmanaged factor here, the, the original factor. Yeah? So we have a scaling factor here, the c star divided by sigma square t minus one. So the estimate basically they uh, scale by this uh, realized volatility from the previous months, the realized factor of volatility from the previous months. And I told you or already that uh, it depends. There are obviously many different ways how to um, implement the scaling factor here. In, in their paper, they use the, they divide the scaling factor C star by the, um, uh, variance, the factor variance from the previous months, yeah, using the uh, squared daily returns, the 22 uh, past squared daily returns of that factor. Uh, other papers, uh, they use the volatility. Yeah? So there are different ways how to do that. So here they, 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 they argue that, yeah, that FT is the original unscaled po portfolio's excess return in months t, sigma square t minus one is the realized variance of daily portfolio returns in months t minus one, and c star is a constant chosen such that the volatility managed factor and the unscaled factor have the same full sample variance. And again, of course, the full sample variance is only known ex post. So this guy here, c star, is something that we know only afterwards. It's an ex post. Yeah? We know this only ex post. So most prior studies assess the value of volatility management by directly comparing the Sharpe ratios earned by scale strategies similar to those in, in equation one with Sharpe ratios earned by the corresponding unscaled strategies. Yeah? Uh, the authors here in this paper, they follow this approach and do not find any systematic evidence that volatility managed portfolios outperform uh, the unmanaged versions. Uh, volatility scaling generates a higher Sharpe ratio for five of the nine equity factors examined in the earlier paper uh, from Morera and Moore. Let's go back here. Yeah, so only in, in, in five out of nine factors, uh, the uh, volatility managed portfolio outperforms the uh, unmanaged counterpart. Yeah? And in a more comprehensive sample of this 100, 103 equity portfolios, the volatility managed versions outperform in only 53 cases, uh, whereas the original versions, so the unscaled factors outperform in 50 cases. So it's basically like throwing a coin. So one, one cannot conclude that volatility management systematically performs better. Yeah, um, yeah. so for, for each factor, they um, estimate the spending regressions using time series data on monthly strategy excess returns. And this is the same equation um, which is used already in the earlier research from Morera and Moore. Yeah? So they regress the scaled, the scaled factor, the volatility managed factor on this, the standard factor, including a constant term, an intercept term. So whenever this alpha here is significantly positive, it's said that this volatility managed factor expands the mean variance frontier. Yeah? Here. So they interpret the results as strong evidence in favor of volatility management and highlight that the positive alphas are synonymous with increased sharp ratios. 
and utility gains for mean variance and best So running this regression, we have to check if the alpha is significantly positive. Yeah? When this is the case, we can say, or according to uh, the authors, according to Moreira and Moore, this would indicate an extension of the mean variance frontier when using the uh, volatility managed counterpart. So what, what do they also in this current paper? So they reproduce Moreira and Moore's in-sample spending regression results yeah, using this equation. And they do it also for this 103 uh, strategies. Yeah. So they find 77 out of 103 volatility scaled portfolios earn positive alphas in spending tests, with 23 significantly positive estimates compared with just three significantly negative ones. So in sample, obviously, everything is fine. So this, this volatility managing obviously gives positive results in sample. So the findings offer a, con a confirmation of the potential economic gains from volatility managed portfolios, at least at first glance. So the increased Sharpe ratios and utility gains, as referenced in the earlier paper from Merrill and Moore, are earned by combinations of two strategies rather than by volatility managed portfolios themselves. So what the authors here claim is actually you have to take into account both factors at the same time, yeah? and not only the volatility managed counterpart. So the, the authors argue also that equation one is straightforward to construct in real time. The investment strategy implied by equation two is not. Why? Well, because the optimal weighting of scaled and unscaled portfolios depends on in-sample return moments. Uh, so the alpha, right? So the required strategy is not known prior to the end of the sample. So we know only x under the alpha. And this is basically what they show later in the paper uh, in equations 6 to 14, where they derive basically um, using portfolio mathematics, the uh, optimal weights that this investor would choose. So in order to address this issue, they adopt the standard approach of using a training sample of historical data to estimate optimal portfolio allocations to the scaled and unscaled versions of a given strategy. Yeah? So they make an, an, an X, an uh, out of sample experiment. In practice, the estimated portfolio weights are often unstable. Yeah? This is basically what they show in their paper. And real-time portfolios are often, uh, and real-time portfolios often underperform uh, relative to the in-sample optimal counterparts. So that's a big problem. So it's obviously difficult or impos impossible to implement these strategies for most of these trading strategies in real time. So the impressive in-sample results of 49 equity factors uh, studied in the earlier paper from Moreira and Moore, uh, volatility managed often harms real time performance. Uh, so the out of sample strategy combining the volatility managed market portfolio, for instance, and the unmanaged market portfolio earns an annualized Sharpe ratio of 0.42 comp compared to 0.46 for, for the strategy that limits its risk investment set only to the unmanaged market portfolio. So <clears throat> there are some positive findings concerning the out-of-sample value um, and volatility management because for the momentum factor, the ROE, the profitability factor, and the betting against the beta factor, uh, it seems to work yeah? because they also find large utility gains for mean variance investors. However, there is little statistical or economic evidence for the remaining six factors studied in the earlier paper from Moreira and Moore. Yeah? And considering the 103 trading strategies, yeah, so uh, there's evidence that, th that this uh, volatility management has a 
poor out of sample performance for the combination strategies, yeah, for combining the managed and unmanaged uh, strategies together. And what's the reason for that? Well, in their paper, they conclude that it's structural breaks. Yeah? So the spanning regression parameters, the alpha and the beta, yeah, um, that real-time investors uh, estimate from past data often fail to provide a reliable indication of the future performance of volatility managed portfolios relative to the unscaled versions. Yeah? So if we go back to equation two, so the, the, the alpha and beta are unstable. Yeah? There are structural breaks. So you get a different alpha and a different beta if you consider different sample periods. And that's, the, that's basically the, the problem. Yeah, so this was the introduction of that paper. Now we go. Now we come to section two, yeah, where they describe the data, and uh, what they write here. Basically, um, they consider the same factors, nine equity factors, as in the earlier paper from Mora and Moore. Yeah, so they consider the size factor, the market factor, value factor, momentum factor, profitability factor, the investment factor, and moreover, another profitability factor denoted as return on equity, R ROE, um, another investment factor from the paper from Hu et al, and the betting against the beta factor. We were talking about this in the last lecture, right? So then also uh, they, uh, they augment the first group of test portfolios with the second group, covering a much broader set of trading strategies yeah, based upon uh, established asset pricing anomalies, as in the papers from Hu et al. and McLean and Pontiff. Yeah? So they used 94 additional anomaly variables, yeah, and they are summarized here, here in table A1. So moreover, you, we, you might remember from the paper replicating anomalies that they clustered these uh, set the set of anomalies and the same is what they do here in this paper here yeah and here they here they argue many of the strategies are based on rated characteristics and they group them into eight categories based on the classification in who at all yeah so into accruals intangibles investments market momentum profitability trading and value yeah so again so the construction of the volatility managed portfolios is in line with the paper from Mario and Moore. So they use the same uh, uh, scaling, scaling factor strategy. Here it's as in equation three. In equation four, they describe how they estimate the um, lagged variance of the factor. Yeah? So they basically square the uh, past 22 trading days yeah? before uh, portfolio formation. Yeah? Moreover, they choose this uh, scaling factor in the denominator, this C star, such that the scaled, uh, the scaled and unscaled factors have the same unconditional volatility. The problem is that the scaling, the scaling parameter C star is not known to an, to an investor in real time. Obviously, you, you need the whole sample in order to estimate this C star. So in section three, they uh, make a comparison. Yeah. So, and we can go basically directly to table one, which is the first interesting table here. So in table one, they report volatility managed and original factors. Yeah, it's now important to note that they present uh, the mean return of the sample, the standard deviation, and annualized sharp ratio for each original uh, factor and the volatility managed factor in uh, annual terms. Okay. And moreover, what's now important to, to know is that in panel C, <clears throat> they report the difference between sharp ratios. Of the uh, between the volatility managed factor and the original factor, yeah, and uh, in brackets they report the p-values and uh, based upon the the z statistic from Jacobson and Corky, yeah, and this how you compound this is given here in uh, footnote number eight, yeah, 
So this is maybe important. So this is the way how you compound the, the Z statistic. Yeah. So you have to know obviously the the mean of the scaled factor and the unscaled factor. You have to know the uh, very the, the the volatility. Yeah. And you have to know the covariance. These are the input, but this is basically given by the data. Yeah, you can estimate it from the sample, from your uh, unscaled and, and scaled factor. So then you have to plug it in here. Yeah, this is basically the uh, what what is in the denominator. Yeah, you have to just plug in the estimates. T capital T is the uh, sample observations, yeah? and here what is in the denominator of that e of that equation is also known yeah so you get it basically you 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 estimate it from the empirical sample yeah and this z is basically then your uh statistic and this is distributed as normal at least asymptotically distributed as normal yeah so you estimate the first denominator then the denominator taking the square root out of this guy here and then you get the z-statistic. And what they report here in the paper is the corresponding p-value of that statistic. Yeah? This is what they report here in brackets. But as we now, for instance, let's go a little bit through the table. So for instance, here they report uh, number one is the market factor, the market portfolio. So what, what, what we see here is the market portfolio earns on average across the sample yeah, from Obviously, 1931, and, uh, sorry, from 1926 until uh, December 2016, right? So the, the market factor earns, on, in this period, an annual sample mean of 7.8% per annum. The annual standard deviation is 18.61%, and the sharp ratio of the market factor of the unscaled, the original market factor, is 0.42. After applying this volatility managing, obviously, yeah, so we get uh, an annual mean of the volatility managed counterpart of 9.55% per annum. Yeah? The volatility obviously is the same, yeah, because this is what the, this is uh, uh, artificial or this is basically a statistical artifact because we choose the, the scaling factor in a way that the uh, exposed volatility is the same, right? So this must be the same. Yeah, this is not surprising. So the sharp ratio of the scaled or the volatility managed counterpart is 0 0.51. 0 0.51 is obviously larger than, than 0.42. But is the difference significant? That's the question. So the difference between 0.51 and 0.42 is 0 0.09. And the p-value is 0.3. So 0.30, yeah? So what does that mean? It means because the p-value is larger than 0.05, it means that this difference here between the sharp ratio of the volatility managed fact market factor and the original market factor is not different from zero. So statistically, we can say that, this, uh, that the sharp ratio of these two factors here is the same. Yeah, so volatility managing obviously does not lead to an increase in sharp ratio based upon that metric. So if we move on to the momentum factor, what, what, what do we see here? So the standard factor earns on average across the sample um, an annualized payoff of 7.94% per annum with a standard deviation of 16.39. Of course, and this results in a sharp ratio of 0.48, so slightly higher than for the market factor. After applying this volatility management, the, the mean obviously increases substantially yeah, from 7.90 from 7.94 to 16.17. Yeah, more than twice as much. It's unbelievable, right? The sharp ratio uh, after um, applying volatility management increases from 0.48 to 0.99. The difference is 0.5 in sharp ratios. Yeah? And the um, we see here from the p-value of that 
uh, you ups, um, the opposite in Gorky statistic, you know, the p-value is zero, implying that the difference in Sharpe ratios is statistically significant. So obviously, volatility management pays off and leads at, at least ex post to an increase in a Sharpe ratio for the momentum factor. And the same is true for the return on equity factor and for the betting against the beta factor, if you check the corresponding metrics here in this table. So what we see here, yeah, they report in the lower part in, in panel D, uh, some of the properties of the volatility managed factor. So for instance, the correlation with the, uh, with the original factor. So we, so we see that the volatility managed market factor has a correlation of 0.63 with the original factor. Yeah? And you see in general here, if you go across the rows here, that the, correla that the correlation is very high with the original factors. Moreover, what we see is that uh, in the 1990s, or here we see, the, for instance, P50 here. Yeah? So this is basically the, the median for the uh, scaling factor. Yeah? So the scaling factor has a certain distribution. Yeah? The scaling factor is, is obviously leveraging the position of the uh, um, that we take in the uh, underlying factor whenever the uh, volatility in the previous month was low and we deleverage the position whenever the volatility in the previous month was high. So the median is obviously um, a leverage of 0.69. It's close to one. So this is the median of the scaling factor um, for the market portfolio. Yeah, But we see that in 1% of the cases. So this is the 99% pro probability uh, uh, figure. So in in 1%, we leverage the position kept in the, uh, so, so this, this volatility management implies that in 1% of the, of the uh, cases, in 1% of the times, we leverage the position kept in the market factor by 600, by, by more than 647%, yeah, which is a lot. Considering the momentum factor, we leverage more than eight times, so more than 864% in 1% in, in of the observations. So we take high leverages, yeah, very high leverages. The leverages are more than 400% uh, in 1% in of the observations for all of the factors here. So, so we take, so, so employing this volatility management implies taking at, 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 at sometimes very high leverages. This is what we learned from this table. In table two, they provide a summary of the, the, the sharp ratio differences between the volatility managed uh, factors or trading strategies and the original strategies. Yeah? And what do we learn from, from table two? So the results in table two suggest that volatility managed portfolios do not systematically outperform the original counterparts. So if we consider here, yeah, they report the difference in sharp ratios, yeah, and if it's significant, yeah, it, this is reported here in the uh, in the brackets. So if we go to, to panel C, yeah, denoted uh, or entitled by trading strategy type, yeah, and here we have these these eight different uh, clusters of anomalies, and here are the numbers of trading strategies in each of these clusters. So we see that for the momentum category, there are only five. Uh, significant strategies or five strategies that have actually, after employing this volatility management, uh, that generate a higher sharp ratio than the original counterpart. Yeah? And then we have here uh, three more strategies. So in total, only eight of these strategies here, in, in eight of, of, of all of these cases here, we have a significantly uh, higher sharp ratio after employing volatility management. Whereas even, whereas in, uh, Four cases we have even significantly negative sharp ratios after employing volatility management. Yeah. So that's why they argue that the results in table two suggest 
that volatility managed portfolios do not systematically outperform the original counterparts. So now you might wonder, okay, so in the original paper from Moreira and Moore, the 2017 paper, why did they choose then these, these nine portfolios or these nine factors that actually generated higher uh, sharp ratios? Was it maybe cherry picking? Who knows? But this is, of course, a question that you might wonder. Next, the performance of a given volatility managed portfolio is driven by two factors. This is what they argue here. So first of all, the relation between lagged volatility and future volatility, and second, the relation between lagged volatility and future expected return. So volatility management is likely to be successful if volatility is persistent and the risk return relation is flat. On the other hand, a positive risk return trade-off makes volatility management less effective. Uh, and then they explain here that they make a bootstrap test. Yeah, and what they found is, okay, they found a positive risk return relation for a given strategy. And uh, basically, so they, 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 uh, they, the data indicates that uh, the data indicates uh, that the risk return relationship tend to be positive across the broad set of these 103 strategies that they investigate. Yeah? And again, a positive risk return trade off makes volatility management less effective. So that's the reason for why it, this op obviously doesn't work out for the majority of strategies that they consider. Yeah. So next, chapter four, entitled Combination Strategies. Yeah, what's going on here? So they write, whereas the result in section three provide evidence that volatility managed portfolios do not systematically outperform um, the original portfolios, the earlier paper from Moreira and Moore, yeah, the spanning regression tests suggest that volatility scale portfolios are potentially more valuable when used in combination with the original counterparts rather than as standalone investments. Yeah. So you have to compound the sharp ratio of the two guys taken together. So next they report spanning regressions. Yeah, they follow again, they follow the earlier paper uh, from Maria and Mural using the same spanning regression tests. Yeah. So again, the test focus on alpha, which which they estimate uh, to be positive. Um, economically large and statistically significant for a wide range of popular asset pricing factors. Yeah. Moreover and Moore further emphasize that positive alphas are synonymous with increased sharp ratios relative to the original factors and pronounced utility gains for mean variance investors. But what's the problem? They, the authors note in the current research that positive alpha in regression five is a lower bar for declaring success of a given managed strategy relative to a sharp ratio difference in a direct comparison. Uh, so for instance, um, consider the case in which both the managed and unmanaged version of a given strategy earn positive average return. Yeah, so when the risk, risk managed factor has positive average return and the original factor has also positive average return. So because the scaled, so the risk managed factor and the, and the original factor have identical full sample volatility by construction, yeah, because that's the way how we choose our scaling factor. Yeah. So the scaled portfolio achieves a higher sharp ratio as long as the average return of the risk managed factor is higher than the average return of this of the standard factor. So the requirement for a positive spanning test alpha, however, is that the risk managed factor should have a positive, should have a larger return, average return than the 
um, average return of the unscaled factor times the correlation. And we have seen already here from table one that the correlation is less is, is high, but it's always less than one. Yeah. So we uh, we have seen that the correlations range from 0.48 to 0.7. Uh, so volatility scaling could therefore lead to a 30% or larger drop in, in sharp ratio and at the same time produce a positive spanning regression intercept. Yeah. So a positive alpha in equation 5 does indicate that the optimal ex post combination of scaled and unscaled factors expands the mean variance frontier relative to the original factor. And this is something that we have also spoken about in when we discussed the Farman French 2018 factor, when we were talking about testing nested models, right? So we concluded that when the regression intercepts are simultaneously um, larger than zero, yeah, we would basically say that the uh, that adding this these new factors to the old factors expands the mean variance frontier. So what happens here in these equations, the equation six to fourteen, they basically de derive um, the the in a framework of the mean variance uh, investor. Yeah, they derive the uh, optimal weights of a mean variance investor. Yeah, and the only thing that I think is important for you to know is that. Um, the optimal weights that, uh, so basically, first of all, we, um, the, uh, one invests in, in both assets. So this, the volatility managed and the original asset, and we have to determine what's the optimal weight distribution between these two assets. And obviously this depends on the alpha, which is, as we know, the intercept term in the regression equation. Like, like equation three, if we scroll back here, the alpha, or equation five, the alpha. So this is basically an input parameter for determining the optimal weight kept in the portfolio. Yeah, yeah. X star sigma uh, denotes the, the optimal weight or the proportion uh, kept in the um, risk balance portfolio. And, but that depends in turn on this estimate of the alpha, which is not known ex ante, and that's the problem. So Moreau and Moore, they note that the positive alpha in equation five indicate that volatility, man that volatility management uh, increases the sharp ratios relative to the original factors. So these improvements in portfolio performance are based on ex post results. And exposed results typically overstate the value of, uh, of volatility management in, in practice. So an investor could only achieve the utility gains by combining the scaled and unscaled versions of a particular factor using weights that are unknown prior to observing the full sample of factor returns. As such, these types of, of, of uh, strategies are not implementable in real time. This is what the authors of this current paper uh, argue. So in the section in sample test, section 242, um, they replicate basically uh, the results reported in the earlier paper. So let's go to directly to uh, table three. Uh, this is what, what, what we see here, spanning regressions. So they regress the volatility managed factor on the original factors. Yeah? And what we see here is the alpha. It's the alpha of that we see but that we have in equation five. So the estimated alpha here, annualized. This is what they report here in table three. So what we see is that volatility management obviously generates in sample, and that's now important to know, in sample a positive alpha for the market factor. For the momentum factor, for the profitability factor, for the return on equity factor, 
and for the betting against the beta factor. Yeah, we see the tier statistics for these factors are larger than 1.96, implying statistical significance uh, on a common 5% level. Yeah. So in panel A2 of table 3, uh, they report ex post optimization parameters. So here are the weights basically for the market factor. Um, the optimal weights would be 72% in the volatility management factor and 28% kept in the uh, standard market factor. So this would be the optimal weights for a mean variance in investor. Yeah. But again, these weights, the optimal weights imply that we know the alpha. Yeah. And this is what we know only ex post. And of course, the weights need to sum up to one. This is for each of the portfolios here, yeah? So always the weights sum up to one. So for the size factor, for instance, it's a little bit weird. So what happens here, we would obviously, this uh, mean variance framework, this optimization procedure would, would suggest to leverage the position kept in the original factor. Yeah. So we invest 160% in the original factor and shorting 60% uh, of the volatility management factor, yeah, which is maybe not surprising because the alpha is negative. Yeah, So regressing the volatility managed size factor on the original size factor has a negative intercept term. But note that this negative intercept term is statistically not different from zero on a 5% level implied by the T statistic of minus 0.87. Yeah? Minus 0.87 is obviously larger or it falls in between the bounds of minus 1.96 and 1.96. So statistically, this point estimate or this annual alpha of minus 0.76 is statistically not different from zero. So in panel B, yeah, so obviously, um, instead of just regressing the volatility managed factor on its own unscaled factor, you can also add here more controls. So, so you can add here obviously other factors as well yeah, in order to control for exposures to other factors. Yeah? And what the authors do as well is, like in, the, like in the earlier paper, they add towards the original factor, the farm and French risk factors of the three factor model. This is what, what you see here in panel B of uh, table three, right? So, and you see is, uh, the alpha for the market factor after controlling for the farm and French uh, for the value factor and for the size factor, we see that the alpha, the annualized alpha slightly increases for the market factor, yeah, from, uh, from 4.63 to 5.24. Uh, also for the value factor after controlling for uh, the other farm and French factors, obviously the uh, value factor um, generates annualized returns uh, that are slightly higher, and the tier statistic indicates significance on a common level after controlling for the farmer's plan three factor model. Yeah, so the results become slightly better after controlling for the farmer's plan three factor model. But again, all of this is in sample evidence. So overall, the, the results reported in this table suggest uh, are consistent with Moreau and Moore and uh, finding that incorporating, incorporating volatility managed factors into an ensemble portfolio choice problem leads to substantial gains for investors. Yeah. They also, uh, the authors also present new evidence yeah, on in-sample benefits of volatility management by applying the tests, uh, as in table three, to the combined sample of 103 trading strategies. Uh, and this is basically summarized in table four, which is maybe not so important for us. So, and they find that 77 of the 103 scaled portfolios earn positive alphas in univariate spanning tests and accordingly are assigned positive weights in the ex post optimal portfolios, optimal co uh, combination portfolios. 
So again, but all this is just uh, in sample evidence. It's much more interesting what's going on out of sample. Yeah? As Morel and Moore obviously claim that uh, one can implement these strategies in real time. So in section 4.3, denoted as out of sample tests, the authors give some more insights here of this paper. So the trading strategies suggested by the in-sample spanning tests are not implementable in real time. Yeah? The authors therefore investigate out-of-sample counterparts to assess the value of volatility management for real-time mean variance investors. When investors are required to form trading strategies based on information available at the time, yeah, given time t or conditional on time t, observed performance may differ from ex post results for at least two reasons. First, if the conditional risk return trade-off for a given factor is unstable over time, past data are less likely to be informative about the future potential for volatility management. Right? Another issue is um, estimation risk. Uh, is estimation risk is a key concern in the real-time portfolio choice problem implied by equation 5. Why? Well, as weights are often unstable and the corresponding optimal portfolios tend to perform poorly out of sample. So again, this is an issue that we have also encountered when we were discussing the Parment French paper from 2018, choosing factors, right? So the, uh, the parameters, uh, Parment French documented that parameters uh, in in-sample tests are upward biased. So that's why they proposed an out-of-sample test procedure. And we saw that the sharp ratios for all um, factor models uh, were out-of-sample much, much lower compared to the full sample, right? This is also important to have in mind here, because obviously what, what goes, what's going on here between all of the papers, somehow um, there's a red line in, in everything. So in table five, they report real-time combination strategies yeah, using their out-of-sample test. So in, in the out-of-sample test, they use the first K months as initial training period to evaluate portfolio performance over the subsequent out-of-sample period of T minus K months. So for their base case results, they specify, they specify an initial training period of K 120 months and employ an expanding window approach to estimate the relevant portfolio parameters. Yeah? So um, for, for expanding window approach means uh, first they use 120 months, compound the corresponding estimates, yeah? so the C star yeah? and the alpha and the beta. So And then basically they um, keep this weights constant and see what's the underlying factor in the, in the next period and employ the estimated weights using the, the training period. Then they roll it one month ahead. So then they use 121 months. Uh, again, estimate the C star, the alpha and the beta and, con and um, see, okay, what's, what's then the, 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 the implied um, volatility managed counterpart given these uh, estimates of the uh, previous uh, time time window and uh, and so on and so forth. So that's an expanding window approach. And there are obviously different approaches how to deal with this issue. Um, some some other papers use a rolling rolling window approach. Yeah. So there are many different issues, and uh, they also talk about this in this paper. But in uh, table five, obviously, they um, report the results of auto sample tests using this expanding window approach. Yeah? And again, they have these, these, the, the nine factors first, yeah? um, the nine factors that, is, that are also investigated in the original paper or in the earlier paper from Morero and Moore. So they report the sharp ratio first. So the sharp ratio of the uh, combination strategy, yeah, where you basically um, combine the volatility man managed strategy now implemented uh, out of sample and the original strategy. Yeah, and you see for the com combination strategy, 
and using the market factor and the volatility managed um, market factor out of sample, we have a Sharpe ratio of 0.42. Compared to ex post, if we um, consider the combination strategy using ex post data, we have a Sharpe ratio of 0.53. Yeah. And we see if we, if we go through, we see always uh, that the real time uh, sharp ratio for the combination strategies is lower for all of these strategies yeah, compared to the ex post optimal uh, sharp ratio. And here we see the uh, sharp ratio uh, using just the original factor. Yeah, in the second row. So we see that just using the, or the original market factor generates obviously a higher Sharpe ratio than the combination strategy yeah, implemented in real time. That's an interesting finding. So, and here in the third row, they report the difference yeah, between the uh, the um, Sharp ratio of the combination strategy minus the sharp ratio of the original strategy yeah, implemented in real time. And we see that obviously uh, the sharp ratio of this combination strategy uh, and the original factor implemented in real time is statistically not different from zero. So this, because the, the, the p value here of the um, test statistic is 0.6064. So the difference here is statistically not different from zero, which means obviously um, it doesn't uh, pay off to employ the uh, risk managed strategy or the risk managed market factor implemented in, in, in real time and combine it with the uh, standard factor. So it's, it's much better just to invest in the original factor, which is the, market, the, the standard market factor in this case. In the same manner, we can go through through the other factors here as well. Yeah. This is what we learn from 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 table five. So in section uh, four, three, two, they basically uh, summarize the results. So. They argue panel A of table five shows results from out of sample tests for nine factors. The sharp ratios um, of the strategies in table five are calculated over the out of sample evaluation period from months K plus one, so 121, to months capital T. For the base case design in panel A, the combination portfolios outperform the original factors in five of the nine cases. The improvements for momentum, return on equity, and be embedding against the beta factors are statistically significant at the 1% level. Yeah, so obviously um, implementing this combination strategy in real time is beneficial for the momentum factor. Yeah, so we see that um, the combination strategy in, implemented in real time um, leads to a sharp ratio of 0.92, and the unscaled uh, momentum factor um, has a sharp ratio across the sample period of 0.49. Yeah, so the difference in sharp ratio is 0.44, and this 0, 0.00 yeah, is the p-value in indicating that this difference, uh, this 0.44, the difference in sharp ratios is statistically significant on any level. Yeah, so for the momentum factor, the return on equity factor, and the betting against the beta factor, yeah, we see here p-values of zero, implying that implementing this combination strategy in real time um, yields higher uh, sharp ratios. The market factor is an interesting case. Yeah? We discussed this, obviously, uh, Moreva and Moore in the earlier paper point out that this strategy would have been easily available to the average investor in real time. Yeah? The authors in the current research show, however, that the strong in-sample performance for volatility scaled market factor is concentrated in the period surrounding the Great Depression. 
which occurs early in the sample. Out of sample investors adopting the combination strategy tend to favor the volatility managed version of the market factor based on its strong early sample performance. But these investors experience unfavorable investment results later on, right? So that's basically the problem. That's the problem, or that's the explanation for why the uh, combination strategy implemented in real time for the market factor does not is not implementable, or that, or, or obviously uh, is not beneficial for real time investors. Yeah. In summary. Table five shows that volatility management has potential benefits for, for real-time investors in some factors, yeah? momentum, return on equity, and betting against the beta. But the gains are not systematic and are much less impressive than the corresponding in-sample results. These initial results indicate that real-time implementation issues degrade portfolio performance in the volatility managed portfolio setting. To assess whether our conclusions or whether the author's conclusions for the nine factors generalize, they turn then to a broader set of 103 trading strategies, which is, table, which is then summarized in table six and which may be not so important because it's basically the same conclusion. But what's then the explanation for the general poor out of form sample performance? So in uh, the tests in section 432 suggest, according to the authors, uh, in the volatility managed portfolio setting, strong in sample performance metrics often fail to translate into real time gains for investors. So the problem is that a large proportion of these in-sample alpha estimates are statistically significant. A positive alpha re relative uh, to a given factor model implies that the ex post optimal combination of a portfolio of, of, or of an anomaly portfolio and benchmark factors expands the mean variance frontier relative to the ex post optimal combination of the benchmark factors. This is what they argue here. So concerning the poor performance in the out of sample tests, there are three potential explanations. Yeah. First, the estimation risk in the out of sample port, uh, portfolio choice exercise. Second, low power in the out of sample test. And third, structural instability in the conditional risk return trade off for the various factors and, un and anomaly portfolios. So the authors, they can, they rule out that it's estimation risk, that's, which is the problem. And they also rule out uh, that it's low power in the out of sample test. However, obviously it's in structural instability um, in the parameter estimates. So um, they argue that a more plausible economic explanation for the poor out of sample performance for the combination strategies is structural instability uh, in the spanning regression parameters from equation five and the implied optimal weights. Yeah. And they make tests obviously, and they argue that the average number of breaks is 2.37 on average for both the univariate spanning regressions and the spanning regressions that control even for the farm and friend three factors. And from an economic perspective, structural breaks in, in parameter estimates are direct evidence of instability in the underlying regression parameters and the associated optimal portfolio weights. So in the volatility managed portfolio setting, the prevalence of breaks often works to detriment of real-time investors who rely on past data in portfolio construction. So the obvious problem that we face here is that the regression parameters are instable. Yeah? So depending on the sample, 
we have different estimates. And therefore, um, a mean variance investor basically has unreliable estimates or basically unreliably uh, estimates the optimal portfolio weights kept in the uh, combination portfolio. So that's basically the outcome of, of this paper here. Um, or oh, that's the, 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 that's the key result of, of this paper. And uh, what why would I would like to do next is I would like to do um, a simple exercise in Excel and in eViews how to um, run this volatility management for certain risk factors. Thank you for your attention.